the swag out them balls. Is that, is and that welcome to the So Too Indie Podcast by Webster uh, Style, know, where we talk about bow ties, comic books, Ooh, and everything I'm between. I'm your host, Webster right Style, right the man, baby. the voice, the fragrance. Nice. Coming back one more time, and guess what, ladies and gentlemen, we are back I mean, on that. schedule. And with that, let's jump right in to the download. This week's download is Chained Echoes. You will find this game for the PS4, 5, Xbox One, Series S, X, PC, and the Switch. And more importantly, it's also found on Game Pass. But if you don't want to just play on Game Pass, you want to purchase it, I believe it retails for the low, low price of $24.99. Now, Chained Echoes is very much in the style of those classic 16-bit RPGs that you find on the Super Nintendo and the Sega Genesis. In this game is set in a fantasy world where dragons are as common as piloted mechanical suits. In this game, you follow a group of heroes as they explore land filled to the brim with charming characters, fantastic landscapes, and vicious foes. Can you bring peace to a continent where war has been waging for generations and betrayal lurks around every corner? I've played this game just for a short time, downloading from Game Pass, and I have to say it is such a charming throwback to those classic style RPGs. Now for me, I did not get into role playing games until the Dreamcast era, so Dreamcast, PS2, I wasn't a big RPG person. But there is a charm about this style of RPG, especially done now in 2022. It is just something so engaging and charming. It makes you want to play it even more. The graphics are on point for its art style and the music is really cool too. It's not anything groundbreaking, but it's definitely something that's engaging, keeps you in the game, but also very reminiscent of the style of music that you will find in the games that inspired it. And a cool thing, it actually started as a Kickstarter back in, I believe, 21, 2021 and 2022. And it looks like they picked up a publisher to put it further out into the world because I believe when they Kickstarter, they only got flex goals up to the PS4 and the Switch. So I'm assuming that they had somebody come in, give them some money to put it on these other platforms in addition to I'm pretty sure Microsoft's cutting a check to have them on Game Pass. So that is my download for the week, Chained Echoes, and that's on pretty much everything. Now let's get into the short takes for the week. Now we just had the Game Awards last week, at least at the time of the recording of this episode. And while I didn't see a lot of things that wowed me when it came to the announcements, Hades 2 look cool, don't get me wrong, but I'm not a big fan of roguelikes, which is kind of interesting considering the game we're about to talk about that did get me excited. Uh, and there were a lot of other announcements that I'm like, eh, okay, I wasn't really that enthused about them. However, one game that did excite me was Hellboy Web of Weird. This game looked absolutely phenomenal. It looked like they just literally animated Mike Mignola's artwork from the Hellboy comic book and made it into a video game. I was like, check please, I'm sold, take my money. So in this game, it's a roguelite. Who would have figured? Um, action game, action adventure game set in the universe of Mike Mignola's supernatural comic series the game is being developed by upstream arcade the studio behind 2019's west of dead and will follow hellboy as he is tasked with recovering an agent of the bureau of paranormal research and defense who has gone missing fighting supernatural adversaries and navigating strange and terrifying locations oddly enough ron perlman is a voicing hellboy it's actually Lance Riddick, which I, it's actually not a bad option if you're not doing Ron Perlman. But the game West of Dead was actually voiced, the main character was voiced by Ron Perlman. So really weird there as far as the voice action is concerned. However, Lance Riddick, excellent choice to play Hellboy in a video game format. The voice just as the command and gravitas is definitely something that if you're not going to get Ron Perlman, he's definitely a good second option in my opinion. So I'm excited for that one. So that's my take on Hellboy, the web of weird. Let's get into some movies. <sighs> Paramount released 
the trailer for Transformers Rise of the Beast. Now, I'm assuming this is a sequel to Bumblebee, and now we're in a separate universe than the Michael Bay films. Thank God, or at least separate timeline. I wanted to cry. I, I literally, I literally had tears coming down the sides of my eyes. It, it, they looked like Transformers. They, they look like G1. Um, we got Mirage. Even though I feel like Mirage was a Jeep in the cartoons. Anyway, we got Mirage. There's a Porsche. Uh, we got RC looking like RC with the paint job from Transformers the movie. It just changes into a motorcycle that looks like the motor. We got Optimus Primal looking like Optimus Primal. Uh, oh, I am. I was literally like, I can't believe I'm watching this right now. This looks amazing. This is. This is literally, this is as close to now. Obviously, okay, I will say this the Michael Bay films were enjoyable, they were decent up until three, four, and five. I was like, What the hell is this? It, it just oh, it just meandered into a Michael Bay film. Take that for what you will. But one of the things that, especially after we got through the second one the second one we had all those little teases of the matrix and all that stuff realistically most of us who are really diehard transformers fans let's be frank we just want to see a live action version of transformers the movie that's really it or like live action g1 we don't need all of this updated for the new millennium we don't see live action g1 that's it that is all we want and this this right here we got some of that with bumblebee but looks like we're really getting this with Rise of the Beast. Um, G1 meets Beast Machines, which is it's gonna be Beast Wars. Beast Machines came afterwards, and that's a bit different uh, when it comes to the theme of the series. But I am definitely looking forward. I am excited about this one, and I will be there opening night to see this bad boy in June. So that's my take on Transformers Rise of the beast next up is they released the full trailer for the last of us tv series which is debuting on hbo slash hbo max this coming january now i am someone who have never played the games i am familiar with the games and the motif and the acclaim of the games as well so i am looking at this trailer and i was blown away i was blown away at least from the trailer how much of a accuracy they employed with making it very much akin to the game and i just can't help but think that i watched something like halo and it wasn't the same sort of accuracy to the story um, dear hollywood if there's a story that people love don't change it and it looks like the people behind the last of us understand that they're the story of these games is what people love is what people keep coming back to it's not something you need to change because this game may have you know sold 10 million copies of, of one and two but there's a whole lot more people who've never played the game before and changing the story for tv does a disservice to the storytelling that was done and I, I say this being again i hate to equate it to halo but seeing how they change halo's story when there's so many more people who were not even exposed to the story and that story would have worked so well just leaving it as it was i'm glad to see that the creators behind the last of us are leaving a good thing alone so i'm excited to watch this even though i don't have hbo max at the moment actually i think i still do have hbo max i have to make sure we didn't cancel it uh, but I will be checking it out because it looks like something that I will really enjoy. And I think you might enjoy it as well. So that's my take on The Last of Us. All right. So during our break between last week and this week, we have been traveling. Uh, recently, we went to Exotica DC 2022 and had a ball uh saw some old friends hooked up with uh my man kuya p uh and a crew from the uh nrw and another uh friend of mine who was there as well uh, it was pretty cool just kind of mulling around it's an interesting atmosphere it's not the sort of convention i've ever been to before so i um yeah it was different 
definitely different, but I, I love the freedom that people had. I love the cross section of people that were there. And more importantly, I was able to interview and have some great interviews and connect with some really cool people who were there, um, two of which I'm going to share today. Uh, first up is going to be wrestling legend Rob Van Dam, who was there with his wife, Katie Forbes, who I did not interview, but I had a nice conversation with uh, about uh, just uh, her wrestling and missing watching her on WOW. And it's just not the same without a couple of key people that were there in the previous season. And I really got a chance to just um, really let Rob talk. Um, he's very passionate about uh, cannabis. And if you're familiar with Rob Van Dam, you, you know this already. But to hear the passion and the pain to some degree uh as he's talking with some of the instances some things he's been through and people and friends he's lost in the industry and one of the reasons that's one of the reasons why he's so passionate about the possible benefits of cannabis and cbd especially um as far as the brain and the head is concerned so uh check this interview out and then i'll be right back and introduce the second one webster style the man the voice of fragrance we're here with wrestling legend r b D. How you doing, Jay, sir? Dude, so excellent. I'm having a great time. I feel fantastic. And uh, that's going to be your answer, dude. Awesome. Awesome. I love How you. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Actually, I saw you my first SmackDown when I was in college. At the, it was Horizon Center then. So it's been a long time since then. But I was a fan of yours from ECW until now. So I have a couple good questions. My blog is very much about men's style and fragrance. So I want to know, what is your favorite fragrance? Break? Fragrance, like colognes. Oh. So you have one. Boss. Okay, boss. Okay, all right. So tell me about RBD, CBD. Well, I've been an advocate for marijuana for 30 years almost, something like that. And so it's something I've always paid a lot of attention to when other people were paying attention to other stuff, like how to dress nice and which colognes are the best. I can't tell you about sports cars, sports. There's so many things that make me different. People don't realize one of a kind doesn't just refer to my wrestling. But anyway, I happen to know a lot about cannabis. When the time came to where I would start my own cannabis line, it ended up being CBD. Uh, you know, now that it's quasi legalized, depending on where you're at, you can control, you know, with the packaging and everything before anybody could rip you off. And, you know, why make a, why grow a plant and call it Van Daminator when anybody could do the same thing? But so now, you know, we have, uh, we have the brand and um, we have uh, THC is under it. Not, there's, uh, there's over 100 cannabinoids in the plant. THC is just one of them. CBD, CBG, CBN, so many that people have never heard of. And that's where the science is going now. So the reason that I decided to start my own line personally was I wanted to attribute to the study of fighting long-term brain damage because a lot of my peers are dead and it's like half of them are from suicide and half are from prescription drug overdoses. Both all seem to relate to a high number of concussions accumulated over their career. And I've had a lot of concussions myself. So I was very interested when I started reading that uh, CBG could be a big factor. CBG is kind of like a stem cell. It's an early early stage of development for the cannabinoid and it can become a CBD or THC at that point. Um, anyway, still working on the ultimate brain uh, formula, but I have a lot of other products, pain creams, tinctures, gummies. If you do want to get high, we have um, Delta 8 and Delta 10 vape pens. People um, want different results. So everyone Ask, like, what would you recommend if I just want to try your product? First, tell me what you're looking for, what you need relief from. Um, but I've said for 30 years, it's the most resourceful plant, the cannabis plant, on the entire planet. And um, I'm, I'm just doing now, like, 
I'm able to now use some of my knowledge to help people. And the feedback I get from people that have used my product feels so good. I, like I've helped contribute to the quality of life, you know. And and really the whole prohibition thing is is anti enjoy your life. It really is. Um, it could replace it C B D THC cannabis could replace up to eighty percent of pharmaceuticals. That's one of the main reasons it's prohibited. And um now people are hearing about CBD, it's getting more popular, a lot more places are carrying it. There's still a lot of questions, people are confused. Hopefully I cleared some of that up. And for sure, uh, if you're weary about whether or not you're getting the right thing, I stand behind my brand, RVD CBD. Not only is being legit, but also the best. Yo. Well, thank you, Rob, that was very informative and light. And I learned something today, I appreciate it. Where can everyone find more about what you're doing and more about RVD CBD? Yeah, so everywhere on social media, I'm at The Real RVD. Follow me on YouTube. Bam. Here, scan this with your phone. <laughs> and uh, that's where to keep up to date with me because I film when I travel around. I'm filming here at Exotica. This will be on my YouTube page next week. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Man. I appreciate it. Awesome. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Pleasure to meet you. And that was really cool to meet RVD. He is, like I said in the interview, he is one of my favorite wrestlers ever. Uh, he's someone whom, in my at my first live event as an adult, uh, seeing him, it was just amazing. Uh, so it was really a, a pleasure and an honor to meet him. The second interview is with the lovely Carmella Clutch. Now, Carmella Clutch has not been in the industry long, but it feels like she's been in it for a long time. Uh, she is a self-professed goofball, but one of the things I took away from speaking to her was um, how honest she was, how captivating she was, and just how much of a beautiful soul she was. Now, check out this interview with Carmella Clutch. And we are here with the beautiful Carmella Clutch. Carmella, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for stopping by. Well, thank you. Thank you for being here. Now, I have a couple questions. Uh, Webster Style is a, a male style magazine, but we really focus a lot on fragrance. So I want to ask you, what is your favorite fragrance right now? Oh, I have a couple. Um, and I've been asking fans every time I, you know, like their cologne. So far, it's been uh, Valentino. There's something from Valentino that I really liked. There was Sauvage that I liked and um, Paco Robame, the new one, not the old one. I like those three. <laughs> now, what fragrance on a man drives you wild? Ooh, the smell of me on his lips. Okay. All right, all right. I'm getting high to here. Another question. So I saw a couple of years ago you did some comedy with CT and some of the two about, I guess, L.A. Um, have you thought about transitioning into mainstream comedy? I would love to. That would be amazing. I'm a big goofball. Everyone's always laughing at me or around me, so why not turn that into a profession, hey? Sounds great. Like I see some of us a while ago. I'm like, she hasn't done anything else. Like she was really like seemed like you had a lot of fun. It was doing those videos. It so. was a lot of fun. It was amazing. And I would love to do more comedy. I would love to do more skits. So if there are any comedians out there that would like to write up a script and you know do some work together, let's do it. Awesome. Sounds good. Now, one last question: What is the nerdiest thing you've done in the past six months? So I've had a chess tournament night. I am sad to say I lost very first couple moves in i'm not a chess player but my friends are and so we did like a movie and game night we played um arabian nights which is kind of like almost like DD &D meets um uh Catan. sorry um yeah so it was i did like a, a nerdy game night and it was a lot of fun to me like i'd rather do that than go to a club well that sounds absolutely fun and i'd rather do that than go to a club myself now tell everybody out there where they can find you Oh, you can find me on Instagram at officially clutched. You can find me on Twitter at clutch or Carmela underscore clutch and OnlyFans clutch VIP. Thank you very much, Carmela. Carmela, appreciate it. Thank you. I really appreciate you. And I love your style. I just had to, I know I complimented you on this before, but I had to say it for the camera. Amazing. Head to toe, everything, even the bow. Oh, it's perfection. Thank you. Appreciate I love it. it. Thank you. Bye guys. Thank you so much. 
And that was my interview with Carmela Clutch. Like I said, it was it was so fun just to meet her. And you know, there's sometimes you meet people and you just feel her energy. She's just the sort of person where she has great energy. And I really enjoyed meeting her. She was just such a cool person to talk to. Now, one of the things that I love obviously are fragrances. And I recently talked about or was thinking about what are fragrances that I can't live for? I see people like, oh, these fragrances you need in your collection. I don't ever tell you what fragrances you need. I just talk about what I like. So here are, after I really thought about it and debated, here are seven fragrances that I will always have in my collection. One of the questions fragheads always get is, what fragrances can you not live without? Or better yet, what fragrances will always stay in your collection? So this week, I'll be looking at seven fragrances that I own that will always be in my collection. And first up is one, well, you should probably guess what it is. And that's going to be the Haraf Signature Pull Home. It is one that is absolutely versatile for many different occasions. It's manly, but not overly like, Ur. and it's just one that just fits so many bills and it's a niche quality for a designer price. And two of seven for fragrances that I cannot live without, or again, fragrances I will always have in my collection is the one that got me started in fragrances. And that's gonna be none other than Oxford Blue from English Laundry. This may smell very similar to Versace Arrows, but it's one that's, in my opinion, a better quality, more sophisticated, and even at regular msrp is still a better value than versace arrows in my opinion now the third fragrance that i cannot live without but will always be in my collection is one that i'm going to have to re-up pretty soon and it is ovation for men much like saharf is one that i feel it is very universal or has a great utility when it comes to many different occasions but it has a sensualness that really bodes well and bleeds into the professional aspects of this fragrance as well as one that i will always keep in my collection and you see i'm getting kind of low and number four in my seven fragrances i can't live without is one that's actually a new addition to the collection but one that is a classic and a staple of many collections and it's none other than nautica voyage very much known as an excellent summertime fragrance it's a fragrance it's a manly fragrance it's fresh it's citrusy but it also has great undertones of musk and moss and cedar and for its price it exceeds every expectation in duration and projection for literally pennies on the ounce number five on my list of seven that i will always keep in my collection is one that is probably the most unique of the seven and one that i only have a small bottle but a little goes a long way and that is echelon for men from kimberly new york i love the uniqueness of this fragrance with the black pepper and musk in the mid notes but it is really that leather and mahogany in the base that just takes this fragrance from a good fragrance to a great fragrance and is one that lasts so long but is one only really for special occasions it's very sensual it's very it's one that i would say you definitely want to wear when you're getting up close and personal number six on my list of fragrances that will always be in my collection is one that i literally search for for over a decade, well, maybe a little bit longer than now, because I only think I've only had it in my collection maybe two years, if not a year, but it is none other than Royal Musk. I first knew of it as Island Musk on a trip to Jamaica for my honeymoon uh, more than 15 years ago now. And from then I searched and searched and searched until we finally found it about a year or two ago under the name of Royal Musk. It is such a light but manly musk with a spice that is just and it's one that lasts for me a very long time, but also sentimental value as well. So last on my list, number seven out of seven of fragrances that will always be in my collection is my introduction to the House of Cremo, and it is none other than 
blue cedar and cypress now this has been described to me as you know when you walk down the lumber aisle in a lowe's or a home depot this is exactly what it smells like it's very manly it just hits the vibe and that's a quote it's a fragrance that i absolutely find amazing for the fall and the winter particularly the fall it just fits that sort of sitting by the fire vibe and with criminal fragrances they are a great price for great quality great projection great everything i love it now those are the fragrances that i will always have in my collection but what is the fragrance of the week well this is one that i actually experienced for the first time this week and it is hnic and if you know you know by my signature scent you'll find this in a 15 ml bottle i'm assuming it's an edp uh for 50 bucks you'll find notes of hay neroli iliverse and cedarwood uh, and it is classified as unisex but i really think it skews more to that masculine motif uh this is one where i really enjoyed it it lasted a lot longer than i thought it would like it had a really good projection i got about eight maybe eight plus hours with this one uh for me and my with my nose the neroli and the cedar would really send out especially neroli and that's what really attracted me to this fragrance the hay gives it a nice earthiness and the iris for me really plays in the background but again after like hour seven hour eight when it's very much a skin scent i smell a lot more of the iris then I really enjoyed it. It is deceivingly fresher than you think it would. And maybe a lot is because of that Neroli. Um, it's really potent. One of the things I just have a little 3 ml bottle of it. And after I sprayed it uh, the first time, I came back into the room where my cologne is hours later and it still smelled like HNIC. Uh, so the fragrance unto itself is pretty potent. I, I actually I like it a lot. And it's one that I'm definitely thinking about getting a, a larger bottle of in the near future once this uh, three ml bottle or sample is pretty much gone. But it's it's nice. It's deceivingly refreshing. It has a nice earthiness to it with that hay. And like I said before, I know it's unisex, but I think it skews a bit more masculine in in my opinion. I I don't know. I would be hard pressed if I'm sniffing up on a lady and she's wearing this. Not saying she wouldn't smell good, but it wouldn't exactly be the scent I would think she would smell like. But of course, that's just me. And that's my fragrance of the week. H-N-I-C by My Signature Scent. Now, let's talk about what I'm wearing today. Now, today is part of the week of cheap. And by the time this episode airs, the week of cheap will probably be done. So I went to Crocodile, which is uh, something that was given to me uh, as a, a gift for my little one a little while ago, uh, back a couple of years ago now. And it's one of these knockoffs you'll find in like those seven, eight dollar stores or beauty shop. And this is a knockoff of, I believe, uh, Lacoste Sport, if I remember correctly. I don't remember all of the notes for it, but I definitely get a sense of pear. I sense, definitely get a sense of a, a musk. It's very synthetic, but it's not horrible. It's one that lasts for me is pretty potent. So it lasts on my skin for majority of the day. Not the greatest projection, but it's one that I smell all day. It doesn't really fade. And so like, I smell it now. And this is our, I don't know, 12, 13 at the moment. And it's one that's still pretty prominent on my body, even as a skin set. So I like it. I enjoy it. Uh, and that's Crocodile. And I forget the company is by, but it is a knockoff of Le Coast Sport. Don't forget to check out the Patreon to get early access to the podcast, as well as other shows that are not published on here. And also, there may be some uncensored video interviews from Exotica as well and footage that you will find only on the patreon also if you're interested with this holiday season getting a wonderful gift for your loved one in your life check out pete and pedro i highly recommend their fragrances and if you use the code in the link ehawks10 or the link in the show notes you get 10 off your first purchase also don't forget to check me out 
every week with my man Brian Saf and the legend Kuya P over at the NRW Checkpoint as we talk about the latest and greatest releases in gaming every week over at Nerds Rule the World. Make sure you check me out over on Instagram at Webster Style and Sartorium Geek, on Twitter at Webster Style, and on TikTok at underscore Webster Style. Make sure you check out anything and everything that is Webster Style can be found on WebsterStyle.com. Of course, drop me an email, info at WebsterStyleMagazine.com. Thank you again for joining me. Thank you again for letting me listen here. And remember, stay safe out there and be blessed.